Just say you're enjoying average, everyday, normal life as you know it. Your emergency broadcast goes off telling you evacuation for your area is imminent. Are you ready for such a thing? Do you even have a plan? I just have one question. Are you ready? What nature and man can dish out? Even if you only had a short window of time to get out? This is the reality of the situation. Someday, sometime, somewhere, all around this globe, this happens. We put it in this situation, we have to leave it. It doesn't matter if you live in the big city, suburbia USA, or the edge of the planet, middle of nowhere. The point is, you have to have a plan. Having a plan to evacuate your home and ensure that your family, yourself, can safely get away in an emergency situation. That's key. If you don't have a plan, get your pen, get your paper, sit down, relax, get comfortable, take notes, because that's exactly what we're going to teach you, how to build your plan. Okay, now we're getting into communications. One way you can effectively communicate within your family is by cell phone. Now you can get a cell phone, um, make sure that it's weather emergency alert capable, WEA, okay? Now, when you get your cell phone it's WEA capable, you need to sign up for the alerts. Now, when you get your alerts, it's gonna kind of be like what comes on your TV or kind of what, what you're gonna hear on your radio. Um, you're gonna get an alert, it's a distinctive alert. Nothing else can do this to your phone except for this alert. Now, once you're signed up for the alerts, and you're getting you're able to get wireless emergency alerts okay what they are they're made available through an integrated public alert and warning system it's a quick and easy way for public safety officials to effectively alert and warn the public about serious emergencies weas can be sent by state and local public safety officials the national weather service the national center for missing and exploited children and the president of the united states that's where you're going to get your alerts from. Okay, now they can come in three alert categories, imminent threat, amber, and presidential. Now make sure that your phone is WEA capable, so you are capable to get all these alerts in case of an emergency. One important thing about having a phone is that you can put everybody that you need to get a hold of in a group. What, what that's going to enable you to do is send out one message and everybody will receive it. Because if something happens, what happens is everybody's trying to dial and call and, and things are getting crazy and it's going to jam up the lines. One message doesn't take as much bandwidth as the whole you know phone call conversation. So that's what makes a phone great. You can message back and forth if you still have service available that, and let each other know who's safe, who's you know the situation at hand bad part is if these things are, do not have service they're absolutely useless now for another form of communication what you can invest in is a set of walkie talkies you can get these in different mile ranges and things like that that may be suitable for you in a situation where you can communicate one with the other but you know there's other forms of communication but if, you, if you're not able to have service on something or you're not able to get through, you're going to have to have a whole backup plan. So. For those of us who have small children still in school or children of any age still in school, what you need to do is file with your school an emergency contact information as most schools require this. Anything that changes in your life where you may need to update that, Need to update. Keep it, keep everything update and current as possible. 
Also, you need to get them through school and figure out their procedures for evacuation, or other natural disasters, or disasters. You need to have their procedures in play in your plan. Write down all the contacts, local and out of town. These contacts are the people and places you and your family may need to contact in case of emergency. Be sure to include the phone numbers of all the people in your plan. Make copies for your kids' backpacks, your backpacks, purses, wallets, vehicles. This is vital information. You have fun yet? Now it's time to build that kit. Your kit's going to have the basic needs for survival. You're going to have shelter, water, fire, food, and the means to do it all again. Okay, in this section, what we're going to cover is building a kit. Every member of your family should have their own kit based on their own personal needs. There's basic requirements to a kit. Your entire kit needs to be together in one place in a corner of your home. If your children has a bedroom, their kits need to be in the corner of their room. Your kit needs to be in the corner of your room. Everybody should know where their kit is. One person should know, or all people, should know where everybody else's kit is as well. These kits are designed for evacuation only. Okay, on my kit, this is my personal bag right here. I have a backpack, a sleeping bag, and a tent. I'm gonna pack the tent. The plan is we can all fit in this tent, but I'm gonna have the tent with me. Each person should have a sleeping bag these should be, I should be able to pick up my pack and have everything there at one time. I can always separate this later. I keep cordage on there. That enables me to put that on my shoulder and go or carry it as such. Okay. Now for my personal kit, what you need to keep in mind is you need water, food, shelter, and be able to get fire. I have substantial food in here. I have enough food to last me for three days in this pack. I also, to, for weight on the pack, I have three bottles of water. That's enough to get me through one day. I have a means for fire. I have Vaseline cotton balls. I have a lighter, a Bic lighter, and a baggie in my pack. I have some canned foods, and I have some dry foods, and I have foods that are in pouches. Okay, now in my pack itself, keep in mind, you need to at least have a three-day supply of stuff with you. Now. It's gonna be hard to carry three gallons of water on your back. You've already got enough to carry. I have some jerky in the top. Okay, now I have a bandana. Along with my bandana, I have a canteen and a canteen cup. My bandana, I can use for many things. But my main reason I have my bandana in here is so I can filter the water that's going in or out of my canteen. I have means for fire, so if I am able to procure water somehow, I can boil it in this, rendering it potable. Need flashlights. I keep two kinds. I keep one handheld and one for my head. My handheld has a compass. You can also get a compass in many different ways, but 
This one here has SOS signal, the laser, it has all kinds of features to that. But really you just need a basic flashlight with extra batteries for that flashlight and a headlight. You need a change of clothes. This is a basic military style roll. In my pair of socks, I keep toothbrush, toothpaste, deodorant, um, all my hygiene stuff, because hygiene is going to be very important at this time, but you can put all that and your underwear or whatever in your socks and just roll everything up tightly to make a military style roll. A first aid kit. One of these is a ferro rod or a striker. In case my lighter fails, I still have spark. This is a waterproof container with a compass built in. I have straws with Vaseline and cotton balls in there. Most importantly, what's good about this, you need a signaling device. I can signal for rescue or an SOS signal. But also, you need a whistle. Stay away from the ones with balls in them because what happens is if they get wet and it's cold, they will freeze. So stay away from ones with balls, but make sure it's plenty loud enough. A little bit of cordage, rope, something in case I need to tie things down or carry. A decent sized tarp, big enough to cover my person or my gear or whatever I may need to cover. I have a tarp. That could even be shelter. A knife. You need a decent sturdy knife. A dry bag. These are very important. If I'm caught in the weather, I want a bag that I can keep my stuff in and keep it dry. Anything that I do not want to become wet, like my extra clothing, my pack. Some basic rain gear. I can fall back on my tarp as a rain setup, or I can have a basic clear style poncho or a poncho of any kind. Also, what I keep in mind, this is kind of optional here. I keep some pieces of fat wood and a little fire starting block a couple Ziploc bags. This is just a personal getaway kit. And this is pretty basic. I have enough here with just this to be comfortable for three days. Based on your skills or the predicament that you may be in, this could be a long-term or short-term kit. You can make these as elaborate as you want or you can keep them as basic as you want. It depends on your personal needs, your personal preference. So with a kit like I had that I just showed you, my personal bug out kit, what I have in my kit is I have food, I have water, I have fire, I have shelter, and also, most importantly, I have the means to do it again. Just a couple more things to add to that pack. Gonna need some eye protection. If the air becomes contaminated, you're gonna need a way to breathe clean air. You can do that through a respirator, a handkerchief, or a little cloth mask. 
point is, whichever you choose needs to be tight to your face to avoid the contaminants from coming in around your mask. Put your couple dirty gallon trash bags in there, a decent pair of gloves, and you're ready to go. Another thing you can possibly use is a bucket. Get a food grade bucket. They will have the little ring around the inside of them. This is seal things in pretty tight. You can make your kits in your buckets. Include whatever you need in your bucket kits. You can actually store a gallon of water in the bottom of a bucket. Having the handle makes them easy to carry. Good thing about buckets like this is you can make stashes. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Just say you, if your pack's in your house, you can't get to your house, then you're going to have to have stashes. You can put these in friends' garages. You can put them in your garage. You can put them wherever you can possibly put a stash. Keep a stash. Keep stuff in your car. Keep a pack. Keep a kit. Keep a pair of good walking shoes. Just in case you're not able to get home, you're ready as long as you can get to your vehicle. Always stay prepared. Think ahead. One step ahead on everything. It's important to make copies of all your important documents. You need to put these documents inside Ziploc bags. You need to put the copies of these documents in safe places where you know if something happens to your home that you're going to be able to retrieve these documents. You need to have adequate insurance on your property and your personal belongings. You need to practice drills with your children. Everybody needs to be on the same page. They need to know everyday safety procedures for any natural disaster. They need to know how to evacuate the home safely and effectively. They need to know where to go to meet up in case you're not at the same place when evacuation is imminent. Practicing these skills with your children ensure that in an evacuation situation, that they're ready. You need to find other meeting places with your children. If your house has succumbed to a natural disaster or man-made disaster, you need to have a meeting place to meet up with them in case they cannot get back home. Such as a tree at the neighbor's house, a park, some place familiar to your child that you guys frequent. Also, if you have driving age children or other drivers in your group, you may want to think about out-of-town meeting places, just in case your community is succumbed to something terrible. You need to become educated on how to power down your home, how to kill the electric power, and how to shut off the gas to your home. In natural disasters or man-made disasters, most of the time, fires is either caused by electrical or gas. Never turn your gas valve back on. Always have a trained, certified professional come out and turn the gas valve back on for you. They're educated, and they will be aware of if there's any leaks and make sure that everything is functioning properly. Be sure to have extra road maps, things like that. Uh, ways that you go is in and out, maybe not compromised, and maybe you find a different path of travel. Be sure to have proper first aid trainings. Emergency services may not be available for a while. Having a well thought out, well performed plan can also mean the difference between a successful evacuation and an unsuccessful evacuation. You can take first aid classes, learn CPR, things of that nature. That'll help ensure on the first aid part of your evacuation become a part of your community. Make sure your community has a plan in place. If not, take the classes, help your community set up a plan. If a natural disaster hits, 
there's going to need to be help from everywhere. Things become a natural catastrophe. And it's a serious thing and it happens all the time. Take this serious. Be prepared. Your survivability rate depends on your preparedness. I want to thank you for taking time to watch this video. I hope you find it useful information. I hope it was informative. If you need additional information, you can visit the FEMA website at fema.gov forward slash are you ready?